Good evening, my dear colleagues. Welcome to another Inged Zoom series. Today, our guest is Dr. Arza, a coach from Yildiz Technical University, Istanbul. Arza Hocam is an English instructor and the coordinator of Staff Orientation and Development Office at the university. Her research interests are learner identity, higher education and continuing education, continuing professional development for teachers, EAP, and second language writing. This evening, the title of her talk is Teaching Speaking with Works of Art. Thank you, dear Arzojam, for being our guest speaker. And uh, we are looking forward to this talk. And uh, welcome again. The screen is all yours. Thank you, Hojam. Uh, good evening, Kocalarım. It's great pleasure for me to be presenting here. I would like to thank Aydan Hocam for her kind invitation. I have been inspired by her energy, dedication, and contribution to the field of ELT. Thank you so much for your kind words, Hocam. Then I would like to share my screen so that we can start. Hocalarım, I guess you can see, right? Uh, today, I will talk about teaching, speaking with works of art. Uh, why I wanted to focus on speaking skills? Uh, you know, speaking is one of the skills uh, students are a bit weak. Uh, you know, and it has also been reported by the British Council. Uh, they had conducted research at a uh, high uh, at high school level, and so students are a bit weak uh, in their speaking skills. And spe but speaking is seen as one of the necessary skills by students. They consider it as uh, they consider it as necessary, and because they can improve their high, their chances of employability, higher salary, and advancement in their career. So speaking is important for them. And but many students and also many students know that speaking a language is also associated with mastering it. You know we have a popular question. Do you speak English? But we don't ask, do you read English or do you write in English? But we ask, do you speak in English? Therefore, I wanted to focus on speaking skills today. And language learning is a demanding and challenging process for our learners. But also language teaching can also be a challenging with crowded classes, with a limited number of weekly courses in secondary school and high school level, and also in an exam oriented system. Now I would like to map the situation in a, in a fun way. Uh, for example, uh, what about teaching in speaking classes? You know, the more waiting time we give uh, to our students, the more answers we can get from our students. But sometimes we are waiting and waiting responses from our students, but they don't respond to our questions, you know, we are waiting. And sometimes students respond to our questions in Turkish and we remind them to speak in English, we remind them to continue in English. And also uh, we use words of praise, encouragement to spark interest in our students. We use praises all the time. And, you know, we are trying to establish a learning community in our classes. We are creating bonds with our students. But sometimes, uh, although we set the boundaries, sometimes students exceed those boundaries and we warn them, okay, I'm the teacher here. And, you know, sometimes we have tears of joy because we, uh, we are amazed by their fluency, uh, by their responses. And sometimes we feel ourselves as if we were in the film that white society. We are talking about love, we are talking about literature, we are talking about poetry. You know, we feel ourselves as if we were in that film. And uh, our students are suffering from language anxiety. We know this. And anxiety presents itself in different forms in our classes. How does it present itself? For example, some students show attempts with fear of speaking, but this is fine. They can show attempts. 
But some students refrain totally from speaking. They just stay silent. They sit in the back row and they avoid eye contact with us because they think that they assume that if they make eye contact with us, we are going to ask some questions to them. So they prefer not to make eye contact with us and stay silent uh, at the back row. And um, one study from the literature review took my attention. I would like to share this with you. Nicholson and Adams. Nicholson and Adams study, they examined the relation between learner identity and methods used in speaking activities. And they found out that uh, activities that rely on personal questions, uh, such as personal questions about their families, family issues, about their age, about their marital status. You know, we have young adult students. We have adult students as well. Uh, they are trying to complete their second or third bachelor degree, for example, at university level, at tertiary level. And those personal questions about their family were perceived as intrusive. And so their anxiety level increased because of those questions. And, you know, also it is the case when we are uh, speaking in Turkish, you know, for example, when a friend of us asks us about our marital status, about our boyfriend, about our girlfriend, about our age, you know, and we feel anxious. We don't want to talk about personal issues, right? We want to give some space, have some space uh, bet uh, uh, between those questions. So our students have uh, those feelings as well. They don't want to have personal questions. Um, uh, since the moment I started teaching, I have always thinking about this issue. Why we ask this question? Do you have a big family? Do you have a large family? Do you have a small family? How many brothers do you have? How is your relationship with your mother? I guess we shouldn't ask those questions because we, we know that they may be suffering from trauma. Maybe uh, their father, their mother passed away. Why are we asking those questions uh, fr uh, from the beginning of the uh, academic year? I can't understand. So this study showed that their anxiety increases because of those personal questions. And also, one of the sources of language anxiety is the fear of negative evaluation. Students are afraid of being evaluated negatively by their peers, by their teachers. And also, there are some other possible reasons. Competitiveness from peer students. You know, students are competing with each other, and they assume that other learners are better than they are. You know, we have social media effect. You know, every day, for example, uh, we come across some posts and we assume that other people are having fun. Other people are having the best moments in their life. So, and our students have that assumption as well. In the classroom, they think that, oh, they are better than me. So competitiveness from peer students. And also they may have a public speaking phobia, maybe phobia or fear. They don't want to speak in front of public they say that, oh, teacher, I don't want to have presentation. I can have a presentation for you, but I don't want to have a presentation in front of my friends. So uh, they have that fear. And also instructors' aggressive way of teaching. What I mean by this, uh, some instructors, some teachers can be, uh, maybe sometimes can be a bit impatient. Uh, they want to correct their students' mistakes immediately. They want to give immediate correction. And they also warn their students, I have told you this. I have warned you about this issue. Why did you do this? So aggressive teaching. So uh, the classroom atmosphere is a bit tense. You can feel the tension in the classroom. And also, the, as I have said, the belief that other learners are better learners. And teachers, unsuitable methods of correction is also effective uh, in, to, in students' uh, anxiety. What I mean, unsuitable method of correction? Sometimes, as teachers, we focus on what students uh, haven't accomplished. We say that you must do this. You must do this. You haven't ap accomplished this yet. We forget to celebrate small victories, you know. For example, our students made a sentence. We should celebrate it. We should use words of praise. 
But sometimes we use our red pencil, we underline, we underline, and we say that you have you haven't accomplished this. You haven't accomplished this. You have problem with your coherence, you have problem with your grammar, you have problem with your spelling, but we don't say what they have accomplished so far. So our students don't want to have second drafts. They don't want to correct their mistakes. And it is also, as I have studied in my doctorate thesis identities, they refute your institutional identity. They say that, no, I don't want to correct any mistakes. So they give you the same paper back. So this means something. And also another study from the literature review showed that uh, the help and friendship the teacher shows towards students and the way teacher talks openly with students is crucial in the level of anxiety and whether the teacher trusts them whether the teacher believes in them whether the teacher uh, respects them whether the teacher talks openly with students so these are important uh, for the uh, level of anxiety if the teacher doesn't believe in them uh, their anxiety increases so we should talk openly with our students also we should show our human side we can also share some anecdotes about us uh, they should see us as human not as robots as teachers uh, as teachers uh, who never make mistakes in the classroom now i would like to switch to art is art for art's sake or can it be used as a tool hmm. and integrating art is not a new strategy i know i i admit this it's not something new there is a natural connection between art and language. This is not a new one. And we all know that art predates spoken and written language from the Stone Age. We know the drawings on the walls. And also, in a metaphorical sense, uh, we are talking about multiliteracy, uh, multimodality. So being multiliterate means to inscribe, to decode meaning in different forms of representation. So students should decode meanings in different forms. And you know, students are surrounded by visuals in, in their social media accounts, on television, everywhere. So students uh, are exposed to visuals. So they should know how to decode them. And also using art in the classroom appeals to different learning strengths. Students are not tapped by traditional grammar activities. They are mechanic exercises. So uh, they feel themselves outside the classroom, you know. So it appeals to different strengths of students. And also the right side of the brain is considered to be creative side, you know. And also it deals with long-term memory. And by using art, we can activate it. And also it helps long-term language acquisition for our students. And also, I should underline the term visual literacy, right? Being literate, the term literacy has changed in recent years. What does it mean to be literate, literacy? What literacy means has changed. It can be defined as the ability to analyze, understand visuals around us and have the potential to use or create visuals. So we are talking another type of literacy. And visual literacy is one of the skills students uh, need to master in today's world, right? And teaching practices that employ visuals can be developed for classroom practices so that students can learn strateg strategies to decode visuals in today's multimodal world, right? And using, as I have said, uh, students are not tapped by grammar activities and also it helps a long-term acquisition and the place of art and also we, i can give you some more advantage before i switch to practice part uh Hülya Hocam has a question huh? i don't want to before yes. i switch I'm, I'm very sorry to interrupt can i ask my question and if i don't know says okay uh, actually it is not a question it's a request uh, please so um, I can't follow the slides uh, completely. So could you please uh, change them a little bit more slowly? Is it possible? Oh, okay, okay, Hoja. Uh -huh. I will do my best. Thanks, uh -huh. so Thank you. Uh -huh. So I would like to talk about the 
advantages of art, using art in our classes as a tool. And teaching with art creates opportunities for novelty. What do I mean by this? Um, in the literature review, uh, it is said that visual education diminishes after being highly prevalent in pre-education, preschool education, and in primary education. You know, primary school students are surrounded with visuals, they draw, they are surrounded by pictures. But what about high school students? What about university students? You know, in the literature review, it says that visual education diminishes. So uh, for university students, for high school students, it is something new. Uh, they don't uh, they don't know anything about art, you know, because of exam oriented system, even they don't go to the cinema, they don't watch movies, you know, so it is something new for them. So we create novelty in our classes and it stimulates students minds, you know, they start thinking, we activate their critical thinking skills, creative thinking skills in our classes. And also, they learn to embrace different ways of thinking. There is no right or wrong answer in the classroom. Different ways of thinking. So thinking is visible in our classes. We know we ask questions all the time as teachers, but um, we should have some pair activities, group activities, you know, and thinking should be visible and we should hear our students, hear our students' voices and there should be no right or wrong answer in our classes. And um, maybe we are curious whether teaching with works of art requires specialized knowledge. No, interest is enough, willingness is enough, willingness to look at our curriculum from a different perspective, this is enough to use art in our classes. And also it enlivens the curriculum, you know, and also teachers are also happy uh, because, because we are not stuck with our uh, grammar books, our course books, the same material all the time. Uh, every year we cover the same material. It provides differentiation for us. We feel ourselves outside the classroom and also meaningful conversation, authentic conversation. We are talking about something real, uh -huh, as if we were in the museum, you know. And also students learn to expand their feelings, express their feelings. They learn to tell stories about the paintings, you know. And also uh, they, we establish a strong classroom culture. You know, we can understand whether we have a positive uh, classroom culture or a negative classroom culture. Of course, criticism is fine, but as long as it is constructive. If there is constructive criticism, it is fine. But negative evaluation uh, is something we should uh, refrain from, we should avoid in our classes. So we should have a positive atmosphere in our classes. Students should feel free to express themselves. And also um, using art in our, in our classes acts as a springboard. We can use this for brainstorming in our writing classes. We can use it as brainstorming in our, for example, note taking activities before note taking activities. And so it acts as a springboard. And students, as I have said, they become more tolerant, you know, they differentiate different values in the classroom, they learn to respect each other. So, uh, because it is all new for everybody. It is new for the teacher as well. We are not art experts. I haven't graduated from the Department of Fine Art. So it is something new for all of us. We are discovering all together. So it is also fun for all of us. Um, before um, I give you some, um, I give you some uh, examples from my practice-based study. I would like to show you some frameworks for art interpretation. Which frameworks can be used for art interpretation? And this is a project, maybe you have heard this. This is a project developed by Harvard University, uh, Faculty of Education, Graduate uh, Education. And they have developed this. Uh, at the end of my presentation, I will share you uh, the references so that you can go and refer to those uh, websites. And when you write Project Zero, you can uh, come up uh, with 
various dispositions, thinking dispositions, various activities, um, uh, uh, the results of their project. You know, you can keep this in your mind. And the focus is on a set of six thinking dispositions in the classroom. This is one of the frameworks that you can use in your classes. For example, questioning, investigating, this is the first one. As I have said, thinking should be visible in our classes and we should have some tools. And this is one of the tools that we can use. Questioning, investigating. The other disposition is observing, describing, the other one, reasoning. The other one, exploring viewpoints. The other one, comparing and connecting. And the last one is finding complexity. This is one of the frameworks. Um, actually, most of the frameworks are similar to each other. I will give you another example within some seconds. So these are the uh, thinking dispositions taking taken from Artful think, uh, Thinking Project Zero develop, developed by Harvard University. You can refer to uh, their website to get more details about this issue. And if students follow these thinking routines, uh, the thinking dispositions as routines in the classroom, uh, they will see that they can decode art, they can decode works of art in the classroom if they follow these steps, of course, uh, by the help of the teacher. Uh, first, teachers should uh, um, rehearse this at home before they enter the classroom. They should study. Uh, they should uh, have a look at the dispositions. Then they can uh, implement this in their classes. And another framework, this is Nicola Giardania's framework. Who is Nicola Giardania? Nicola Giardania is an art teacher is an art uh, educator, museum educator. She established this pyramid based on students' data, gathered sc school visits to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So she developed this pyramid based on school visits to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And there are some steps. And I use these steps in my practice-based study. Uh, let's get familiar with these steps. What are they? In the first step, as you can see, the first step is observation. Students begin by uh, looking closely through open-ended questions. What do you see? What do you notice? Basic descriptive questions, okay? Who is he? Who is she? What do you see? Okay, basic questions. And in the second step, evidence-based inference. So as a teacher, you can ask your students what makes you say so? Why did you say that? And then students bring some evidence from the painting. He or she says that, oh, uh, she's wearing gloves, you know, teacher, you know, it's cold outside, therefore I said that. So they are bringing some evidence from the painting. This is the, this is the second step. What about the third step? At this point, as a teacher or as peers, as students, we can uh, introduce some contextual information about the painting, about the era, about the artist, about the film related to the painting, okay? Uh, we share some background information about the painting. And then students synthesize this information with their previous ideas. And then they say that, hmm, I got it, okay. Uh huh. He lived in blah blah. Okay. He had this this disorder. Okay. Then they synthesize this new information with existing ideas. And in the last step, this is interpretation step. Uh, we can ask the message of the art, or we can um, bring a creative task. We can um, turn it into an activity, creative activity with our students. So Nicola Giardania's pyramid has four steps. The first step is observation, basic questions, then evidence-based inference. We ask students to bring evidence from the painting. And third step is information. We share some background information about the artist, about the painting, about the era. And in the last step, we can ask some open-ended questions. And also we can turn it into an activity if they are young children, they can draw something, for example, on their own, 
they can share their drawings. If they are young adults, for example, we can group them in pairs or groups of four, and we can give them a task to do related to the painting. Mm -hmm. I hope um, I have shared the frameworks clearly so far. Now I will switch to my practice-based study. In the study, as the participatory researcher, uh, I started every lesson with five different works of art. And, you know, my teaching context is English preparatory school at a state university. Before the pandemic, I did this face-to-face -face education and in full term with A1 level students. This is important why A1 level students, you know, they start preparatory school with low scores. So this is highly important. A1 level students adopted this activity very easily. So uh, we don't expect uh, this kind of activity from higher levels of students, from B1 level students, B1 plus level students. A1 level students can also do this as long as they know some adjectives, as long as, for example, they know, for example, weather, uh, terms related to weather, uh, terms related to clothes, even they can describe paintings, you know. So uh, if you're a secondary school teacher, if you're a primary school teacher, you can adapt this activity uh -huh, in your class. And I, I have published this uh, practice-based study in one of the high-ranking journals. If you want to get some more details, you can uh, go back and read this article. It has been published already. And 20 minutes or 30 minutes of one class session per week were devoted to this activity. As part of the researcher, I had this activity with my class. 50 A1 level university students, two classes, 25 in one class, 25 in another class. And they started, as I have said, with the lowest scores to the prep school. And they were expected to finish the prep school with B1 plus level at the end of the academic year in spring term. But uh, when I conducted the study, they were uh, in, at the end of the fall term in December. Uh -huh, I conducted the study because I established classroom community. I created bonds. Then I uh, tried to implement this in my class. And participatory action research was used in this study. Some more details about this study. In addition to classroom observation, as I have been, as I, I was the participatory researcher, I observed my class, of course, but I also conducted some semi interviews with my students. Interviews, you know, are essential to collect precise, relevant, and meaningful information uh, about our study. And 20 students were randomly chosen to interview uh, so that I could get some manageable sample. I recorded their interviews. And based on classroom observations, it was evident that using works of art helps students to, uh, um, to get engaged to the class. They really enjoyed it. They feel engaged in the classroom. And it was noticed that also students adapted this activity very easily. Uh, at first, they were hesitant uh, because they didn't know much about art. Uh, they uh, get, got prepared for the university entrance exam. They didn't watch movies, for example. They didn't do anything. They didn't read books. They didn't visit museums. They didn't go to exhibitions. But they adapted this activity very quickly. Maybe at first, they called me Antel Hoca. But then they were very happy. They were curious about the works of art. So my suggestion for my colleagues, uh, if they are working in secondary school, primary school, high school, or uh, higher education level, don't give up. Uh -huh. Maybe at first they can be uh, somehow hesitant. But uh, just uh, believe in yourself, believe in your students, set your expectations a bit higher so they will adapt to this activity. And they recognize many features in the works of art. I can assure you that. And also making statements about the paintings help them uh, in practicing their speaking skills. They are having fun and also they are making sentences and they are practicing their speaking skills. Now, I would like to uh, give you an example. If Aydan Hocam kindly uh, helps me. Uh -huh. I don't know, I can't hear you. Uh -huh. Okay. Of course, <laughs> I, I can help. 
Hocam, maybe we can start with you and the other ones, maybe uh, some uh, some of our uh, friends uh -huh, can help us. Sure. Osman Hamdi Bey's tortoise trainer. You can see the painting, hocam. Mm -hmm. Now we will start with this question, hocam. Mm -hmm. What do you see in the painting? Okay. I'm a student, right? Yes, hocam. You okay. can consider yourself um, um, in tertiary level, higher okay. education. Okay. Um, it is an old uh, scene. Old. Uh -huh. um, um, Osman, uh -huh. Ottoman, Ottoman, uh -huh. maybe. Ottoman. Maybe. Um, there are um, animals. Uh, what are they called? What are they? Uh, turtles. Right. Huh? From okay. the uh, the name indicates. Okay. Ah. Okay. I missed the name. Uh, he is looking at uh, the turtles uh, the turtles are uh, eating uh, some uh, leaves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i can see them on the floor it is an old place uh, mm -hmm. look at the walls uh, they are old uh, and um, the man has a uh, uh, a musical instrument. Ha, very uh, good, Hocam. So he is holding a musical instrument. Yes. And what is he doing with that musical instrument? Any guesses? Um, he plays it. Ha, maybe. Okay. Uh, okay. Why? I don't know. Uh, because as far as I know, mm -hmm. the turtles uh, don't understand music. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm, they do. Mm -hmm. Maybe they do. And he has a, a turtle bir şey var arkasında. Turtle, is it turtle? Uh, no, is it a, 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 a drum? Uh, I guess it's another musical instrument. Oh, Two okay. musical instruments. Two uh -huh. musical instruments. Uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh. uh, maybe, he's an, maybe he's an educator, trainer, maybe. Maybe tortoise trainer. Uh, at this moment, I can give some information about Osman Hamdi Bey. As you have said, Hocam, uh, Osman Hamdi Bey was an Ottoman statesman, mm -hmm. intellectual, art expert, and also prominent and pioneering Turkish painter. And he was also an archaeologist. You know, uh, he was the uh, founder of Istanbul Archaeology Museums and mm -hmm. also Istanbul Academy of Fine Arts. And he, he had great influence uh, on, um, uh, on artists. And in this painting, he is training uh, his tortoises, you know? Mm -hmm. He is training, he is giving education to his tortoises. So at this point, I would like to ask you this question. What are the good methods to teach something to someone? Can we make use of music like him? Can we use a musical instrument to train someone? I think so. Well, he is holding two, uh, well, holding one and then carrying another one. Uh, I don't know whether a student can make all these statements. Uh, I know, for I know, uh -huh, level, of but course. I, I'm... Um, I cannot pretend anymore. They will give simple uh, sentences. Yeah, but of course. my friends are making uh, silly comments in the chat box, making me laugh. <laughs> uh, so Shulu Jam says, uh, the tortoises are saying, how can I get to the nearest river? <laughs> and Defno Jam says, tortoise whisperer. And Ali Jam says, they will be ninja turtles after a tough training. <laughs> See, my friends never let me do something serious here. <laughs> but so, uh, uh, Hojam, I I uh, have a question. Uh, uh -huh, please, Hojam. Is it? Uh, I'm a student now. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it uh, possible uh, to train tortoises? I guess it's possible. 
uh, you know, um, for example, if you have a cat, if you have a dog, we have trainers for them, right? They train yeah. our dogs. They train our cats. Why mm -hmm. not tortosas? Mm. Maybe during the Ottoman Empire, they trained, they educated them. But this is interesting. They didn't use disciplined methods, you know. They didn't use harsh methods. Mm. They used music. Huh? Mm. So maybe we can make use of music to educate someone in our classes. This can be an idea. Then in the last step, I can ask questions. Do you think art can be used to teach something? Uh, for example, they can come up with ideas, you know, uh, for example, maybe during Ottoman Empire, if they know that also music was used to treat patients, you know, mental with mental illnesses, music was used, for example. Mm -hmm. And also maybe they can say that, oh, teacher, while I am studying, I listen to music, for example. I wear my headphones all the time. I am listening and I'm studying at the same time, you know, music motivates me. When yeah. I listen to music, I feel myself better. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They can talk about the importance of music in their life, mm -hmm. for example. We can simplify questions in accordance with the level of our students. You know, we are the educators, we are the researchers, we know our students best. Uh, I am... Um, I held the questions a bit complex because in this webinar, I didn't hold it a bit simple. Mm -hmm. So you can simplify the questions. You can ask, is music important in your life? For example, how often do you listen to radio or do you listen to Spotify? What is your favorite song? Uh -huh. You can simplify the questions. Uh -huh. okay. It is up to you. Uh, Hoja, Amanda Hoja has a wonderful question. It uh -huh. is for fun, I know. Uh -huh. Please, Do you know what they train tortoises for, to do? What were they expected to do, the tortoises, I mean? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it, they, it, they it compete a, with it, each other? I don't know. It is a very good question. I mean, why would <laughs> you um, uh, spare so much time to train tortoises? What were they expected to do? Uh, maybe as a teacher, I can say, I don't know. Why don't we check? Uh, why don't mm -hmm. we Google? Uh, we can go back to Google Amja and we can <laughs> search for that uh, yes. all together as yes. a class activity and we can share our ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Ex excellent. Uh, so that uh, uh, you also model uh, uh, that teacher is also a lifelong learner. Definitely. Uh, we shouldn't refrain from saying, I don't know. If I don't know, I can admit this. I don't know, class. Uh, let's check this. Uh -huh. So why not? Because I'm the role model here. I can make mistakes. I can apologize. So no problem for that. We are all humans. We all make mistakes. Okay. Uh, no problem with that. Okay. <laughs> and actually, I didn't use Osman Hamdi Bey in my study. I should admit this. But after my study, uh, I got some criticism from a friend uh, in South Korea. I don't know, maybe she will watch this video, Natalie, her name. Uh, she's an art educator, art teacher. She sent me an email. And that email, she uh, told me that, um, I, I think you ignored some parts of the world in your study. You focused on American art. You focused on European art. And uh, I, I said, oh, really? Uh -huh. I did this. I didn't make use of Turkish painters, Turkish artists in my study, for example. For example, uh, Black people, I didn't use any paintings related to Black people in my study, for example. And then maybe we are going to have a project with her in the future. Uh, we became friends with her. Maybe she will watch this video. I would like to thank her for her criticism, constructive criticism. Therefore, I wanted to put Osman Hamdi Bey uh, in this webinar. Actually, I didn't use in my class. Uh, that can be one of my confessions for you. And in this painting, uh, is there any volunteer, friend, colleague, who can have this with me? Uh, he or she can raise his or her hand. Hülya Hocam, I guess. 
Yes, I hope I can manage it. Uh huh. Hülya hocam, uh, you see, René Magritte's The Art of Conversation. The name of the painting is this. Uh -huh. First, uh, let's start with some descriptions. Okay. What do you see in the painting, hocam? I see a uh, large skies. And uh, by the way, um, Dr. Ekoch, uh, should I pretend uh, to be, uh, let's say, a pre-intermediate student or should I be? Actually, I, I don't know. We can have this activity even with adults. We are all new to maybe, not we are all, maybe there can be some experts among us, but yeah. we are all learning some details about the works of art. So. Uh, it's up to you, Hocam. Uh -huh. Okay, I am being myself. Uh, Hülya uh -huh. Hocam, evet, be yourself because it is very hard to pretend. I tried, okay. I failed. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, who says that I'm not going to fail when I'm being myself? Let's see. <laughs> okay, so I see uh, white skies uh, and some mountains, some empty roads. Um, in the middle of the photo, or, uh, sorry, it's not a photo, in the middle of the picture, uh, actually a bit above, uh, I see two men, they are like on clouds, um, I can see their backs, uh, probably they are chatting and they are talking about an important issue or something like it. Uh -huh. Very good, Hocam. So Thank they you. are talking, huh? they are having yes. a conversation. Yeah. Maybe at this point, um, as a teacher, for example, in the classroom, you can give some background information. You know, René Magritte uh, was a surrealist of all his time, surrealist painter. Uh -huh. And René Magritte described his painting saying, my painting is visible images which conceal nothing. They evoke mystery. And one, when one sees one of my pictures, one uh, one asks oneself this simple question what does that mean and now we ask mm -hmm. this question what does that mean and it doesn't mean anything he says because mm -hmm. mystery means nothing it is unknowable so mm -hmm. he was a surrealist you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, he influenced many artists uh, after his death and he said that everything we see hides another thing. We always want to see what is hidden by what we see. So uh, we put the meaning on it. He said that it doesn't mean anything, so we put the meaning. Uh -huh. So they are talking, they are having a conversation. Maybe at this point, I can ask some open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. What are the qualities of a good conversation, Hojam? Um, a good conversation is uh, catching. I mean, um, the speakers uh, can't stop themselves or even they uh, forget, they lose themselves. They uh, become isolated from what's going on around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. indulge in a conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh? Thank you for the vocabulary. Oh, Oja, I, I was just going to use that word. Do you consider uh, yourself a good listener, Hoja? Uh, excuse me, could you please repeat Do you that? consider yourself a good listener? Uh, not always. A good listener? Not, al not always, really. We are. Oh, sometimes we are not, unfortunately, yeah, because of hectic it, life. If my mind is occupied, uh, if I am preoccupied or something like it, unfortunately, I'm not a good listener. And when was the last time you found found yourself indulged in a conversation. You forgot the time. Oh. You forgot where you were. When was the last time? Okay, maybe it was last month with a workmate and we had a short, we had, we, we had a short afternoon together after work. And uh, she's a new friend to me. And um, we had tea, coffee near the lake. And uh, it was such a pleasure to get to know her, really. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Hojan. So uh, make two examples. So huh? we can have this in our classes. We can adapt the activity uh -huh. in uh -huh. uh, accordance with our students' level. Thank you so much, Julia Hojan. Uh, it's my pleasure. May I ask a question? Please, Hojan. Okay. Um, 
I am suppo I suppose that I'm going to use uh, this activity or even this picture in my in one of my classes. And what kind of an open-ended question do you think we should finish with? I mean, I can't see the uh, interpretation part. Uh, mm -hmm. in this slide uh, even for example they can say as i have said qualities of a good conversation they can do this or um. they can say for example uh for example uh what are the qualities of a good friend they can brainstorm if they are a1 or a2 level students you know they know some adjectives uh -huh. say that you have conversation with a friend right uh -huh. what are the qualities of a good friend for you what uh. does a good friend mean to you they okay. can say that, oh, he must be honest, or, you know, he yeah. must be a good listener, he must be cheerful, so they can make use of adjectives, for example. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh, this time, in this example, I mean, open-ended questions, the, the complicated, the high-level uh, task came a little bit earlier? And actually, uh, you know, it, it takes uh, time, of course, uh, as you are proficient in English, all of you, uh, it passes very quickly, but in the classroom, it takes most of our time, because students have difficulty in making sentence, using words, you know. Uh, and... I mean the ordering of the questions. Uh, Hulia Ojam, uh, mm -hmm. shall we uh, keep the questions for the Q&A part? Because okay, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, if okay. we continue discussing like this, we will never be able to finish the presentation. Okay, I'm Thank sorry you. about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also, I have some more examples, but I can skip or I can uh, have one more, Hojam. It is up to you, Aydan Hojam. Uh -huh. Maybe I can have this. This is one of my favorite paintings. And, you know, the name of the painting, maybe you can write to the chat box, you know, the artist. This is one of my favorite uh, artists and painting, Edward Hopper's, you know, Automat. Uh -huh. The name of the painting is Edward Hopper. For example, is there any volunteer, teacher, any colleague we can have the conversation with? About this painting, anyone? can raise his or her hand. Amanda Ojan, would you like to do this so that we can go fast? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amanda Ojan, yes, okay. let's start with the first step, uh, basic questions. What do you see in this painting, Ojan? What is that well, lady it, doing? Well, it looks like she could be waiting for somebody. It looks like it's at night. Uh, she's sitting there alone. Uh, she could be waiting for something, but that could be me just being um, prejudiced. She could just be sitting there enjoying a cup of tea. Why should she what, be waiting for someone? What makes you she's say speaking. so, Hojan? What makes you say so? Why did you say uh, she's waiting for someone? This is a, a, a good point, is that we usually assume that when women are sitting alone in cafes that they're waiting for someone. Uh, uh, that a woman okay. could possibly be sitting there on her own. That's because I never get served in cafes when I'm sitting alone. <laughs> and this is the second step, you know. We ask uh, 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 our students to come up with some evidence. This is the second step. What makes huh? you say so? Why right. did you say that? And we say, um, Hojam said, maybe in a restaurant, in a cafe. Uh -huh. And how does mm -hmm. she feel, Hojam, in this painting? How does she feel? Excited, tired? <laughs> I think she looks very thoughtful. She's thinking about things. Maybe she's going, if there is somebody coming, she's going to tell them something that they might not be happy about. Or mm -hmm. maybe somebody's just left as well. She not, might not be waiting for somebody. She could have mm -hmm. been with somebody and that somebody's left. Mm -hmm. And she's thinking. Mm -hmm. She looks a bit sad though. She looks a bit uh, thoughtful and mm -hmm. sad. Uh, so uh, her facial expressions made you, mm -hmm. made you say so. Mm -hmm. Yes, and she's looking at her cup, you know, she's contemplating a cup mm -hmm. of tea or coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, as a teacher, we can give some background information about Edward Hopper. You know, Edward Hopper uh, depicted urban life in his paintings, uh, hectic life, urban life, isolation, loneliness, you know, generally human, uh, lonely human uh, in his paintings. And so isolated figures he chose to paint. And so after that, we can ask our students some 
open-ended questions, for example. Uh, hocam, do you like going out alone or with your friends? Which one and why? Well, both really. I mean, if I go out with my friends, I'm more likely to get served something. But sometimes I like to be out. Sometimes I like to sit in a cafe and drink a cup of coffee and just watch things go past or read a book or, um, you know, it depends on the mood. I like both. Mm -hmm. But some people don't feel okay when they are alone in a cafe. Huh? They think that everybody is uh, looking at them. Huh? Do you feel like yeah. that? It, it can be like that, yes. But it's not really, but uh, I suppose it could be. It depends what kind of, what, where you are, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for example, we can say, have you ever wanted to stay alone? Or for example, if they are um, elementary st uh, level students, we can say, do you prefer a group work? Or for example, do you uh, prefer to work alone? Do you prefer studying alone? Or do you prefer studying with your friends? at the library, uh -huh. we can ask that those questions uh -huh, to them in accordance with the level of our students. Thank you so much, Amanda Hoca. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. And so uh, I hope I have shown you some examples. Another one, you know, Van Gogh's Cafe, Terrace at Night. We can use this one and we can give some background information about Van Gogh. And generally, Van Gogh is pursued by many as the mad artist, but actually he's a genius, you know, he was a genius of his time. And uh, his uh, vision, his uh, wonderful sense of colors, extraordinary technique uh, impressed many artists after his death. So we can uh, show one of his uh, paintings in our class. Also Monet, for example, Monet's Water Lily, we can show, we can ask our students, for example, how do you spend your time in your favorite season? Do you like a winter or do you like summer? Which one? Uh, how do you spend your time? And do you like spending your time at home or in the nature? We can ask them. And for example, for background information, information we can show um, Monet's garden in Giverny in France. And so Monet actually had a garden with his family and he drew his paintings in his garden. He was so lucky, I guess. Uh -huh. So we can show some paintings from real life. And also Farmer, for example, Farmer's girl with a pearl earring. We can ask questions again, what do you see? Can you describe the girl? And for the, for example, open-ended question, our colleagues ask, uh, we can ask for a comparison. You know, in the past, there was no camera, so people had their own paintings. Nowadays, people take selfies. Do you like taking selfies? How often do you take selfies? What are the uh, positive and negative sides of sharing selfies on the social media? We can ask them to brainstorm on this or we can talk about this topic what makes a person beautiful what is beauty for you they can say oh is it physical appearance or is it love is it smile on your face uh, we can discuss we can brainstorm on that and you know after um i observed my students i had semi interviews with them and i got their responses about this activity now now i will show some of their responses whether they like the activity or not for example one of my students said we looked forward to each lesson they were curious about works of art i got familiar with different works of art one of my students said grammar is boring i don't like grammar activities but this kind of activities you know i like we need speaking for our future life. So I really like starting lesson with something colorful, they said. And one of uh, my students said, I'm a university student, but I still have to talk about my family. My parents got divorced and I don't want to talk about my private life. So talking about paintings makes me feel outside, outside real world. So uh, students don't want to talk about their families they may be suffering from trauma related problems. And also teachers often ask students what their fathers and mother's jobs are. So they are difficult questions for me. One of my friend's father passed away and he doesn't want to talk about his father. So talking about paintings is interesting for me. Huh? Uh, 
he or she said. And our teacher didn't criticize our comment. It was like solving a puzzle. We gave our opinion. We told a story about paintings. And I didn't know much about paintings before this activity, one of the students said. However, our teacher encouraged us to say something about that day's paintings. And I enjoyed listening to my friends' ideas and adding something new uh, every day, uh, uh, learning some, uh, some new details every day. So what are the benefits of using art in a language class? Language and art can complement and assist each other. Responding to art can be stimulating and it can lead to various activities. It is up to your creativity. You can turn it into any creative activity you like. It is up to you. Uh -huh. Using art provides a useful change of pace. You know, uh, we are restricted with curriculum, with pacing issues, but uh, we change our pace. We, we slow down a bit. Uh, we observe our students. We establish a classroom community with them. And also students use their language skills. This is something we want. Of course, we want to have fun, but we shouldn't forget uh, our aim as well. What is the aim of our, uh, well, what is the aim of this lesson? We want them to enhance their uh, skills, language skills, speaking skills. And thinking about art can be motivating. And maybe after that, students can use Google Art and Culture, that application, I showed that application to my students. They can download it to their cell phones and they can use them yeah, during break times, whenever they are free, they can find a painting and they can start asking questions about the painting on their own. And also students um, creating thinking, creativity, uh, uh, thinking skills also, we help them to develop their creative thinking skills. And also students uh, have become familiar with works of art and the focus shifts from students to the slides, to the paintings. We uh, shifted the focus from students to the paintings. And also the art is new for everyone, including the teacher. It doesn't require prior knowledge. And also it makes easier, it makes it easier for shy students. Uh, they know that there's no right or wrong answer for them. So they can speak, they can say whatever, uh, comes to their mind. And also we can use it for promoting speaking in a language class. And also students express themselves. Also they develop values such as concentration, persistence. Also they um, improve their uh, problem solving skills. It is like puzzle, you know, they are trying to solve the puzzle and they visualize things and they express their feelings. And I suggest you some activities. Uh, for example, uh, my friend asked me what we can do for the activities, for open-ended activities. We can ask our students to choose a character from the painting and uh, write a story about it for uh, the creative activity at the end of the task. We can ask students to write questions to ask an artist or ask a char character in the painting. We can use this for feedback. If they are young children, we can ask them to draw some pictures, for example, about their feelings at the end of the semester, about their feelings, about the lesson, about the teacher, about the course, they can draw paintings. We can ask our students to bring photocopies of paintings to the class. We can turn the class into an art gallery, you know, they can share their paintings and students can ask and answer questions to each other. And for example, and also you can use this website. Maybe you can uh, take the photo or you can uh, screenshot of this part and you can uh, go to this website and you can use the lesson plans from this website uh, from Getty Museum. Getty Museum offered some lesson plans. This is one of them. For prepositions of location, you can use this painting. Uh -huh. You can say, oh, where is the cup, for example, you can ask, where is the pot like that? Where is the plate? Uh -huh. And students can revise prepositions of location. Another lesson plan, again, from Get the Museum, uh, students can revise uh, words related to weather, for example. What is the weather like at A1 level? Uh -huh. They can talk about winter, they can talk about summer. So you can get lesson plans from this website. And also you can uh, show a painting and you can ask your students to look at the painting for 30 seconds and list the 10 uh, things that they see. Then they compare their answers. 
then they, then they look again and they add done more things. They brainstorm, they write whatever they, uh, comes to their mind. Huh? They look at the painting for 30 seconds. For example, Mona Lisa, uh, they can write five questions to ask this character in the painting, uh -huh. like an interview, pair activity, for example. One can uh, ask the question, the other one uh, puts himself or herself in the shoes of Mona Lisa and answer the questions. And again, in this painting, they can write questions for this character in the painting. Or for example, Frida Kahlo's painting, uh, you can uh, group them as pairs or groups of three, groups of four. And one of the members can write questions and the other ones can answer those questions. They can put themselves in the shoes of the character in the painting. How old are you in this painting? Where are you? What is your job? Where do you live? What are you thinking? How are you feeling? Who is the man? Uh, they can ask questions and the other ones can answer. Uh -huh. A1 level students can do this because they know WH questions. They are basic questions. Uh -huh. And of course, there are some potential problems of this activity, I know. What are the potential problems? Students may be reluctant to participate. So teacher's attitude is critical. They may think that they don't have enough background information. So teachers should encourage them. Students may not consider it necessary for language learning. We have some students, for example, during brainstorming activities, they say that teacher, when are we going to start the lesson? They ask this question. They don't consider brainstorming activities as part of the lesson. They think that grammar activities are real activities and we are waste, wasting our time by brainstorming on things. So we should teach them, we should explain them. We are teachers, we can teach them the aim of this activity. And some students can make fun of each other's comments, uh, but teacher's attitude is important. So uh, as I have said, I, I can say, I don't know this. So he doesn't know this, she doesn't know this. So it's not a big deal for us. We can learn all together. And all uh, comments are welcome. Students may not find the chosen painting stimulating. For example, they said, oh, I don't like a Van Gogh teacher. Come on, you like Van Gogh. Then you can ask them to bring their own paintings to the classroom. They can bring some photocopies or they can use some, uh, they can use their flash drive and they can put some paintings in it and you can reflect it on the board and you can talk about those paintings. Sometimes teachers may feel they are not experts. Uh, they feel that I, um, I should have some education training, but you don't need to have training. Uh, willingness is enough. And the atmosphere in the classroom shouldn't be stressful, you know, as we, as we always say, teacher is the core of education, teacher is the heart of education, so teacher's attitude is important. I know this activity doesn't suggest a deep study of art, but as a teaching tool in language development we can use. Uh, things to consider what we should do as teachers, we should ask open-ended questions. We shouldn't criticize our students. We should validate, we should encourage them. And also we should ensure that a variety of styles are represented, not European, not American. All the styles are represented in the classroom. And also we can um, also involve our students in this activity. We can ask them to bring their own photocopies. I know art cannot uh, solve or fix a student's language problem, but act as a springboard for discussion. As Pablo Picasso uh, once said, the purpose of art is washing the dust of daily life of our souls. Likewise, art can wash the dust of anxiety from our students when it becomes a part of our lessons. I would like to end with some film suggestions for you. Maybe you have watched them, maybe you haven't. Uh, Loving Vincent is one of my favorite films. Also, you can suggest this to your students. Uh, at Eternity's Gate, Van Gogh at Eternity's Gate is another film that I like. And this one, uh, Midnight in Paris is uh, another film. And uh, Maudet is one of my favorite films. And also Modigliani is another film. You can suggest these to your students. Also, you can watch them. And these are my references. 
These are my references. And also, as I have said, Harvard Zero Project, you can refer to this website, you can get some more ideas. And these are some important art links, museum links. And thank you so much, Hojalerim. Thank you very much, Arzojan. What a pleasant session. I mean, uh, we, we really, uh, en I enjoyed it very much. My pleasure. Uh, there, are, uh, <laughs> there are some um, uh, remarks uh, in the chat box. Uh, Sherif Hojam suggests that um, teachers can take their students to an art gallery for a change. Uh, so they can see real paintings in uh, mm -hmm. their uh, real atmosphere. That would also mm -hmm. be a very good uh, idea, he says. Uh -huh. I totally agree with you, especially with university students. You don't need to get permission. Yes, Sheriff Ocham, go ahead. Uh, I uh, took my students to an art gallery and uh, I applied this method there. It's a kind of visual thinking and it's very creative for, for university students and also it is possible uh, to teach them uh, what does portrait mean, sitter, symbol. And then I show the pictures uh, for 30 seconds, then I cover them and I ask them open-ended questions right after this. And uh, 30 seconds uh, again, I show the picture and, and I, I cover the picture again and ask, I ask them different questions. Uh, so it's a really creative uh, Arzoja uh, and it really works, especially in language classes and uh, with my literature students. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. I also suggest my students uh, to go to to visit exhibitions to go to museums and i remind them that for example sabanji museum is free on wednesdays as far as i know para museum is free on fridays for example you can go free you can go for free and you can visit those museums um, but during lesson times we have to get permission from our administrations to do that uh -huh. but as long as we can get permission um uh -huh, we can um, go to exhibitions all together definitely uh -huh. thank you Ojan. uh suado Ojan says how can we reach your references uh is it possible to uh, uh, uh -huh. share your references uh -huh. with us well uh, uh don't forget that uh we're going to uh mm -hmm. publish the video of this session next week so if you have mm -hmm. missed any part of it you can re-watch it and you can pose and take mm -hmm. a screenshot of the, the uh, uh -huh. references take photo. yeah so if um for example you can do it right now or mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you can wait for a week you can um take the references uh and uh, reach them uh somehow mm -hmm. uh Maria this is Lisa, the first part uh, for references. This is the second part. Okay. So can you can keep my them colleague... for five seconds so that if mm -hmm. they want to take mm -hmm. screenshots, they can? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Maria Luisa uh, asks if you can share the movies once more. Uh, I have shown, I guess. Uh -huh. I can show again. Yeah. And also, um, if... Um, Ali Hojam, I guess, am I correct? If he downloads um, uh, my article about uh, this topic, he can also have a look at uh, references part. Uh -huh. Most of the references were similar. Uh, uh, yeah. Teaching, speaking with works of art. That was that uh, Suada Hojam, Suada Hussein Zada. Uh, Suada Hojam, uh -huh. uh, she yes. can. She, she can uh, definitely also download read the, the article. Article. for further details mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, and uh i can't find it now but uh, a colleague of ours has stated that uh this may be a little bit difficult for a1 level students uh but you have mentioned that your study was done with a1 level students yes so but uh, as i have said i used very simple questions you know uh, where is she? What is she doing? What is the weather like? Do you like winter? Do you like summer? Why? 
Huh? Like that. Even my open-ended question is this. Do you like winter? Why? Okay. Do you like going out alone? Why? Okay. Uh, Open-ended questions we should keep simple for A1 level students. Uh -huh. Of course, to give examples, I try to use some complex questions, as I have said. Uh, well, Mert Hocam, I believe it is possible for A1 level pure beginners because it all depends on, well, I keep saying this, uh, the text is not important. The task is important. In this situation, the text is a, a painting. So it is not important uh, whether they can speak about a painting in, in detail in full sentences in a sophisticated manner. It, they can talk about a painting in very simple uh, sentences, using very simple sentences. They can even mm -hmm. use only words or phrases, mm -hmm. ah, uh, blue sky, uh, uh, lonely man, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. That is possible. Arzu Hocam has said positive feedback is important. So if you say, if you encourage them, great, brilliant idea. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. so they can keep trying, keep trying. But if you insult them, of course, they won't. Of course, we can't start this in the first week, in the second week. As I have said, I, I have started this activity uh, at the end of November. And, you know, uh, they were about to finish the first book, A1 level book. And yeah. they were about to start A2 level. So they know present simple. They know past simple. They know basic adjectives. Uh -huh. So they can make sentences. And even uh, they are writing paragraphs, descriptive paragraphs, by the way, describing places, describing person. They are writing. Why not? They can use them and they can speak. Uh -huh. uh, Zen Nuru Hujam says, even the colors may be asked. One of the first definitely. topics taught to A1 level students. Oh, I totally agree with you. You we can, talk, we can talk about colors. We can talk about shades. Mm -hmm. It's not only a good... Um, idea for speaking activities is also a good uh, material to use uh, mm -hmm. to teach something. Why not? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Ali Hojam says the question why can be a little bit uh, nightmarish mm -hmm. <laughs> because they cannot answer it shortly and they need uh, uh, some uh, more detailed know, example, answers. I like I like winter. Why? I can say I like snowy weather. I like walking, for example, hmm. when it's snowy. Uh, this is why part. Huh? Yeah. I like rainy weather. Uh, mm -hmm. This is why part. Of course, they don't make sophisticated well, answers. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know what you think about that question. I hate people when they ask, when I say, for example, I like rain. They go like, why? I like it. Huh. <laughs> Do I have huh. to come up with a reason? I like oh, it. That's it. Full stop. Right, right. I, uh -huh. I really right. find it a little bit, uh, I don't know, patronizing. Mm -hmm. You say mm -hmm. something, uh, you know. I, I love, uh, for example, pizza. They go like, why? Uh -huh. It's none of your business. I like it. <laughs> Get off my but also back. taking the temperature of the class is teacher's responsibility. So he or she should know your interest, your attitude. Yeah. Therefore, teacher will avoid asking you that question. Yeah. Uh -huh. We don't want to make you feel annoyed in our classes, yeah. for example. I, uh, what no, I what I was trying to say is uh sometimes uh, teachers ask forced questions. Uh -huh. You don't need to ask forced mm -hmm, questions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just ask natural questions. I mean, it, it doesn't sound natural to question someone when someone says, I like it, I love it, okay? I love horror movies, why? <laughs> oh, for <laughs> God's sake, I don't have to explain it to you, I just love them, okay? 
maybe uh, we pretend when someone asks, uh, we pretend to be sophisticated about it and say, well, you know, I like the tension, but the tension is not a, a real tension. <laughs> yeah, that is nonsense for me. Okay. But of course, we can ask why for certain other things. And definitely, it is the best way to um, help our students to think mm -hmm. deeper level thinking. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to come to the SHA to get you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Oja. Uh, the the pieces of uh, art that you have chosen are just suggested uh -huh. examples. We can examples, choose. Of course, we can choose any artwork. Am any, I right? Any, any. Okay, okay. So depending on the level of our students, depending on the age of our students, depending on the interest areas of our students, we can even come up with uh, pop art. Oh, definitely. Okay. Uh, or, um, I don't know, uh, maybe a, a, a cartoon. How about that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. something totally abstract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe a mixture of colors. Because that will, if our le uh, students' level is very high, then they can talk about the impressions. Okay. They can write a caption, we can show them a photo. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we can find various photos on the internet, uh -huh. visuals yeah. on the internet. Yeah. Any sculpture, anything, any photo you have taken in a museum, for example, anything. Sculpture makes me laugh nowadays because of the wonderful art pieces in Turkey right now. I showed them, Hocam, in one of my lessons, we compared modern art and uh, we were talking about modern traditional art, art modern sake. art and i added this to another category and we have this category what do you think non-art uh, category uh, another <laughs> <laughs> big bread you know uh, a child uh, out of watermelon <laughs> yes yes and have you seen the recent one uh to honor doctors and nurses they have uh uh, prepared this wonderful mm -hmm. sculpture uh, it's a total nightmare if a child sees it definitely uh, she cannot go to sleep or he cannot go to sleep <laughs> that's for sure okay so uh, please my colleagues don't forget that the suggestions here are just suggestions so it is in your power to make the necessary adjustments to make the necessary adoptions uh -huh. adaptations and use them in your classes. Azorjam, thank you very much for this excellent, brilliant, wonderful presentation. And uh, your kind words, uh, Someone, Halim Hocam, I believe, thanks you and says, you have opened a new window for him. Yeah, I mean, uh, yesterday I had a session on speaking activities. I haven't used any artwork. But the next time, I will definitely include uh, art. Mm -hmm. So you have also uh, inspired me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, my dear colleagues, if you have any questions, this is your last chance to ask. Otherwise, I'm going to say goodbye. Okay. Well, thank you, Hojam. Thank you, Hojam. Thanking you. Uh, I, I do definitely thank you on behalf of Inged. Uh, this has been a, a wonderful contribution to our collection. And uh, as usual, I want to thank the participants for being with us and uh, making all these wonderful jokes in the chat box. <laughs> kept, <laughs> kept me laughing, <laughs> especially... Some of our participants are very naughty, I'm very much like <laughs> the normal students. They are so naughty, you know, they can just cannot help themselves. But uh, you know what? It makes uh, everything uh, fun 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Take very good care of yourselves. Also, Jam, thanks again. Thank you, Hojan. Bye bye. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. Ah, next week we are going to have an award ceremony. Please do come. Woo! We are so excited. It's going to be our first award ceremony. And in fact, one of the winners here. Hello, Walker the Jam. Okay, you feel shy now? <laughs> you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You deserve that award. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, we will uh, listen to uh, the winners' stories, how uh, they ended up with uh, what they have been doing. Okay, so it's going to be a wonderful session. Hope to see you uh, with us uh, again. Take care. Bye bye.